Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. We're going through the blessings of Hurricane Ian. And as you noticed the past couple days, um, we kind of mixed up the order a little bit uh, because we did Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day. And um, and then, uh, but we're, now we're going to get back on uh, schedule here. And this is number eight of the blessings of Hurricane Ian. Um, we're talking about these blessings and you could find there's many things we can find wrong with hurricane Ian, and uh it doesn't take much imagination to think of those things but i wanted us to look at blessings of hurricane uh Ian. uh the one that we're talking about today number eight is co it's a glimpse of how most of the world lives okay after the storm hit uh a, a good chunk of us were up without electricity and um, so uh, then we were, you know, had to sometimes drive around to find fuel and, um, and stuff like that. Um, and so it put us, it, we were inconvenienced, you know, the air conditioning wasn't working. Um, we had to go someplace to get water sometimes and um, ice was like non-existent. Um, and then you had to wait in line to get fuel, maybe, and um, if you could find fuel. All right. Those are things all, that all happened right after the storm. Um, so after the storm happened, I-75 was a track traffic jam, um, which we live just what, a quarter mile away from I-75. I-75 was a traffic jam of people and resources coming to our rescue. Okay. Um, that, you know, there is semi loads of uh, materials and resources come in from up north uh, into Florida um, to save the day, okay? And it wasn't uh, about a few days after the storm that we could go to the park um, about a half mile away from us and get uh, water and ice and uh, food and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, our government and, and the resources around that uh, was, was providing that uh, for us. The rest of the world doesn't live like that. If the if a country, um, most countries, if most countries has a storm like what came through, um, it, Ian, what came through as Ian, um, if it came through, say, um, Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, um, any of those places, um, there would be no convoys of trucks to the rescue. Okay, you'd be fending your from your, for yourself for quite a while. All right. And the, realistically, that's the way most of the world lives. And uh, so when you had those first few days after the storm, it gave us a glimpse of a way of the way the rest of the world lives. You know, they don't have electricity. Um, they don't have, you know, running water um, and uh, stuff like that. Air conditioning, ice, all that stuff. So... Yeah, in most foreign countries, there's no one to come to the rescue. The truth is that we live better in the first days of the storm, after the storm, than most people do their whole lives, okay? After the storm, here at, at, at our house, um, we had a house. Um, we were without electricity. We had a generator, though, and we could, um, and I didn't buy a generator until uh, way later. Um, but we had, uh, we had food and uh we could go get uh, fuel and uh, and so forth. So we had all that stuff, but the rest of the world doesn't have an uh, an emergency generator and all that stuff. But what we had, we had a, a nice big house and so forth. The rest of the world doesn't have even that. Uh, so um, let me tell you a couple stories here. We, I was in Haiti. Um, this was back a few years ago. And as I was in Haiti, we were, well, we went there in this one trip just to build homes uh, for people. And the people in this area where we were working um, lived in an area that had been hit with hurricanes. Now, these, the people had just built like these um, houses, the dirt floors, just made out of sticks and, and stuff and a thatched roof and, and stuff like that. Well, we're, that works okay. Um, when the weather is nice, but when a hurricane comes through, uh, you just blew your house away. So it, it can't stand to a hurricane. 
and what would happen is every time a storm would come, a hurricane would come, these people um, would run to the missionary school and and hunker down in the classrooms there because the classrooms were made of concrete block and a concrete roof and, and all that. So um, it was a safe place for them. And uh, the missionary there had the vision like, hey, we need to build some homes for these people. Uh, so they have a safe place. When a hurricane comes, they could stay at their home if they need to. Not that he was like wanting to kick them out of the school, but they should have a, a decent home. And the people there worked. Uh, it wasn't like a, a handout. It, they really worked to to take care to have that home. And so this family that we were doing the building the home for, they had already put the block up before we got there. And when we got there, we were building the trusses. And so we built the trusses well, maybe a mile away from where the house was. Um, and then in the morning, it, it, we would build them one day. And then in the morning, the husband and wife, they would come and they'd get the trusses, like one by one or two by two, and uh, take those trusses and carry them. The two of them would carry them. Sometimes the kids would help to the house. Um, and and uh, they might borrow a donkey or whatever. Um, but sometimes it was just those two people carrying them. Okay, and I would hate to carry a, a truss very far at all, but these people were carrying them to their house. And um, then they were, as I was there, we were working on the house there. As I was working at the house, um, you could see um, the house they were living in was just a one room hut, really. Um, and they had a few chickens walking around. Um, and those chickens, one of them disappeared during the day. And uh, it was going to be the food that was going to be cooked that night um, and that was the meal uh, for the day them cooking up this chicken and making you know chicken stew or whatever uh, out of this and that's the way the people lived anything they ate they grew and, and raised they think there's no uh, Walmart there uh, hard to believe no Walmart no Burger King nothing like that there um, everything they had they had to raise there there was another time I was in Africa, and I was I was I was teaching some chaplains there, and the chaplains. I was going through uh, uh, a proverb, and I talked about how like, man, after you do a long run, it's nice to just get a cold, refre refreshing glass of water, uh, that's like ice cold, you know, and just you can feel how cold it is with the ice. And these guys, they looked at me like I was from another planet. I'm like, what's wrong with you people? I mean, and they they talked amongst themselves, and they were like, we don't have ice here. There's no <laughs> no ice. I'm like, oh, okay. So these guys were uh, soldiers in, in the Nuba Mountains in uh, Sudan, and uh, there's no ice. So if you ate some, if you killed something to cook it you ate it all then. There's no refrigeration at all. So um, you, if you killed a cow or a chicken or whatever, you cooked it up for everyone to eat and you ate it then. And um, and so that's, so there was no ice at all too. And for me, like I gotta have ice cold water every day when I'm drinking, you know, and uh, heaven forbid if I don't have my ice cold water. Um, but these guys, they don't have ice. It's just, and so sometimes we'd be around there and we'd get Cokes and most of the time the Cokes were warm. Okay. Um, that's just the way it is because they don't have refrigeration. So the bottom line here with, with number eight is a glimpse of how most of the world lives. Uh, it helped it after that storm, it helped me see, you know, and take into perspective how rough I have it here um, but it doesn't even compare to the way most of the world lives all right so that's something for you to think about uh, think about how the rest of the world lives and doesn't have all the conveniences that we have they don't have the convoy of trucks coming to the rescue after a storm they don't have air conditioning and they don't have uh, hot water okay they might not have a stove and they might not have a refrigerator okay all those things we had real soon like a week after the storm 
all that stuff was back up and going for us. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm a regular dude walking in the word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue looking at the blessings of Hurricane Ian. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then.